Hi guys, um, today we will be looking at the mechanism of breathing. So you need to be able to explain how and why air is moved into the lungs when breathing in, explain how air is moved out of the lungs when breathing out, and explain what is meant by pulmonary ventilation and how it is calculated. Right, so in terms of the spec, uh, we are here now, okay? So uh, we will be looking at the antagonist work of the uh, intercostal muscles. Okay, and let's get started. In terms of the uh, of the last learning objectives, you need to know how the pulmonary ventilation is calculated. So this is the equation. So write this down. It's a tidal volume uh, multiplied by breathing rate. Right. So breathing ventilation okay do not ever mix up with respiration those are two different things so breathing it's a ventilation so the air is constantly moved in and out of the lungs we've got breathing in which stands as inspiration or inhalation and breathing out expiration or exhalation so you need to be aware of all those uh, terms so what happens when you breathe in of course, the air pressure of the atmosphere is higher than the air pressure inside the lungs, so the air is forced into the lungs. When you breathe out, the story is all the way round, opposite, so the air pressure in the lungs is higher than the air pressure of the atmosphere, so the air can be forced out of the lungs. Right? So, the movement of three sets of muscles uh, brings the pressure change within the lungs. So in our previous video, we, did, we were looking at the uh, structure of the human gas exchange. Now we will be looking how those muscles work together. So you've got the diaphragm. OK, so uh, this is where the diaphragm is uh, located. And it's a sheet of muscles that separates thorax from abdomen intercostal muscles so the ones are, that are in between the uh, ribs so we've got two types of them internal so they contract when you're breathing out and external so they contract when you're breathing in right so we're going to have a look at the process of breathing in and breathing out what happens to the muscles and what happens to the pressure and the volume so breathing in of course you are getting the air into the lungs so of course you need to increase the volume of the lungs so rib cage will move outwards and the diaphragm will move downwards this process is an active process so uses energy so what happens external intercostal muscles and diaphragm contract in this situation and internal intercostal muscles relax so you can see that internal and external muscles work in antagonistic manner rib cage move upwards and outwards diaphragm flattens the, ink, the volume of the thorax cavity will increase because, of course, you're getting the air in. So as the volume of the thorax cavity increases, the pressure decreases. So it works always in opposite directions. Remember, when the pressure increases, the volume decreases. So when the volume increases, the pressure decreases. Okay, and because of that, the air flows from higher pressure to lower pressure area so down the pressure gradient okay and the atmospheric pressure is now higher than pulmonary pressure okay so air force into the lungs when you can predict now what will be the uh, breathing out like so in terms of the muscles we will see quite opposite manner so let's go through it quickly so breathing out is a passive process so we don't require energy for this so external and diaphragm now will relax internal muscles will contract ribcage will move downwards and inwards so opposite diaphragm muscle will will relax so rib push uh, pushed up by contents of the abdomen decrease in the volume so uh, increase in the pressure and the air flows from of course high pressure area to the lower pressure area to down the pressure gradient 
and pulmonary pressure in this situation is higher than atmospheric pressure, so the air uh, forces out of the lungs. Right? So, as you have uh, seen, the antagonistic movement of the intercostal muscles, uh, it's the fact that they work in opposite directions. When uh, they contract in the breathing out process, they will then relax in the breathing out process. Right? A few questions to get used to. Okay, the diagram shows the position of the diaphragm at times P and Q. Okay, so P, Q, this is where the diaphragm is. They label it for you, so it's quite easy. And you need to describe what happens to the diaphragm between times P and Q to bring about this change in a shape. So describe easy what you can see, right? So what you can see, you can see that the diaphragm between P and Q flattens, okay? And uh, this is because the diaphragm muscles contract. Another question using the same diagram, air moves into the lungs between times P and Q, explain. So now you need to use your knowledge how the diaphragm causes this for free marks. Okay, so explain, use your knowledge here. We're using the idea about the pressure and the um, volume so diaphragm will contract as we mentioned in our previous question so moves down so this will increase the volume and decrease pressure so remember always use the manner of those two aspects so once the volume increases the pressure decreases so what then so what the air moves from high higher to lower pressure or down the pressure gradient which we described in our uh, slides before. Another picture, I mean the same picture but another question, describe how oxygen in air, uh, in the alveoli enters the blood in capillaries. Okay, describe how, so imagine you've got now the picture of alveoli and capillary uh, next to yourself and you need to be looking at the movement of it. So recall the structure of alveoli and capillaries and this takes place by diffusion across alveoli epithelium so then we got the max okay that's a really common question make sure you will get used to them right one more question describe and explain the mechanisms that cause forced expiration so breathing out describe so say what you can see explain use your knowledge why you can see such a thing so what we need to be talking about again are uh, recalling the muscles and volume and pressure. So look at the pattern at the questions, always the same. So contractions of the internal intercostal muscles, relaxation of diaphragm and external intercostal muscles um, causes decrease in the volume, so increase in the pressure. So the air will push down pressure gradient. Okay. So, to summarize, what is the role of the diaphragm in breathing out? It could be a similar question in breathing in, okay? So, breathing out, what happens? What's the role of the diaphragm? Okay, the diaphragm moves up, okay? This will reduce the volume, increase the pressure, and the pressure in thorax will be higher than outside. So, to summarize, manner with the questions, it's always about the muscles, so be clear which one contracts, which one relaxes, and then talk about pressure and talk about the volume. Right, so that's everything. Thank you.